Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 52. <clears throat> um, we're going to work on the menu today. Uh, considering what I want to do, because I know that if I want to click and drag on the menu, <clears throat> I'm still going to need this logic here. And this logic here to let me know, oh, I traveled this far. Um, these are all the touch positions that the user has given. That kind of fun stuff. <clears throat> but um, I'm not sure if I should actually pull this out into its own class. I feel like copying and pasting the code. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I do know that I have an input class somewhere, touch input. Touch deltas is touching. Debug touch, draw points. Let's um, let's actually just try using this here and see how this works. Maybe we've got some bugs lurking. So I know I'm going to need a touch input and a link to a debug touch. There we go. As always, these should be at the origin. Uh, debug point container. I'll just throw this into the canvas. And debug point prefab. Hmm. I do not see it there. <laughs> Maybe in resources. No. Debug point. Why couldn't I find you? And I do believe everything is set up now. Not quite. There we go. No errors. Oh. <clears throat> hmm. I wonder if my debug point container in my other level is living somewhere different. Special cube test. In my canvas. Bottom left corner, okay, thought so, cool. Do, 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 canvas. Bottom left. Yeah, I don't think I care about the position. I only care about the anchor point. Hmm. There we go. 
So we got our debug points drawing. That makes me happy. Good for testing. So yeah, I think actually I can keep the other code. Although that's still having code replication. Um, so here we update. Um, let's change this from a unity message function to a public bool. No. Public void, um, oh, well, you know, this will return a list of vector threes. Read touch input. And then down here, we can return a reference to the touch deltas. That could be a problem. I don't think I'm using touch deltas in mouse controller. Yeah, I'm just using touch positions here. So this definitely needs a touch start. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Hey, Thunderbutt, please don't. <laughs> and see, now at this point, I'm starting to feel like I'm wasting time trying to decide what to do. I know what needs to happen. Um, and I might just grab all of this stuff. Our menu, well, see, the mouse controller might be different for our... for our cube. I could do this handle tap. <clears throat> I could make this a delegate function inside of the cube core. So different cube cores um, can define what happens when you tap that cube. Whittling enter, whittling exit, transition. How actually do I... Where's our special cubes? Limited select. How do we do this here? Get selectable, selectable on selected. Okay. Ah, uh, see, it's going to be a little bit different for menu system. Will it? I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe before we get the spin going, let's um, let's get a selection working. Scripts, menu, main menu input. Um, maybe we need a main menu cube. Ooh, and the cube is going to have different faces pointing towards the camera, right? And each face is going to represent an option on the main menu. So each face is actually going to have select, which is different from a cube because the cube 
as a whole is selectable. Maybe let's go to the drawing board. It's been a while since we busted this out. <laughs> so we have a cube, and each face is going to be linked to a menu option. Um, I could look at the normal of the face and then the normal of the camera. And if they are nearly opposite, I could just sort of loop through all of the faces. I'm not sure how much I like that, <clears throat> because actually, um, I believe that each face is going to need to know which option, you know, is next to it, what it's adjacent to. Because when this thing is showing, and we've got play, on the face, we're going to have options over here and achievements up here, right? So it actually should be fairly easy for us to just say, okay, this is the face that is facing towards the camera. I have that saved somewhere as a reference. And then if the user spins the cube downwards, then achievements will be facing the camera. And we'll know that it's this one because they spun it that way. So we don't have to do any sort of janky math. Um, we can just physically, you know, directly link the cube faces together. And that should be a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Explicit. That's what I'd like. So here's our cube. Here's our face container. So maybe we should name this to main menu cube face. Is this going to break something if I create an empty game object here? No. Nope. Yeah, and you know what? I always make the mistake of like trying to do everything at once. Um, We'll just try and get selecting the front face thing first. Actually, let's, um, inside of the up face, I'm going to add some 3D text. And middle center. Alignment center. Okay, so let's make the font smaller. I don't need rich text. Oh dear. <laughs> One pixel font is not it's not happy about that. But 10 is enormous. And it looks awful. How did we get this working last time? It didn't look awful. I don't think we did a font material. Don't think it would need to be dynamically occluded. I 
I definitely would like this to be in 3D space so the the text is directly applied to the cube so that way when I spin it that goes up and goes away. But what the heck? Maybe if I move the cube back and we'll scale it up just a, a little bit. Yeah, what is going on here? That looks so terrible. Should I be using the other actually good text rendering service, NGUI. I believe NGUI is free now on the Unity Store. I don't know how excited I am to, to break open an entire new library of stuff. Hmm. Oh, character size. Hey, character size. I missed that completely. Okay. <laughs> um, still pretty awful looking. Not bad. Yeah, that's fine for now. We'll have actual art, you know, real art in the game. Let's see what this looks like when I spin it. Yeah, not bad. I can hide the play. <clears throat> or I could just always have the play um, face the camera. No, but then if I did this... Yeah, I think I'd rather have the options floating out here. Well, uh, you know... If I do just put this further out, and let's do that. So this is always going to be a child of the cube. Uh, what do you call that when it always faces the camera? Billboard. Cash shadows off, receive shadows. Nope. Is that going to work? That would make me so happy. Let's do it in play mode. Nope. Although it doesn't look completely centered, actually. C is coming forward, Y is zero. Oh, that's the cube itself. Uh, the cube can be on a Y1. I like that, that's fine. Uh, what about this text? Yeah, Y, zero, point five. Oh boy, that is not what I wanted. I hope you guys really can't hear my cat. She makes the grossest noises. <clears throat> so, negative 0 0.5. Let's see our cube spin plays. No, even then, look at that. From our camera's perspective, it's looking pretty darn goofy. That's because we are in perspective mode. Let's see what orthographic does for us. Yep, completely messes up the mesh, but I'm okay with that. Um, cube.
yeah, that looks great. So if this is always just looking at the camera, I'm going to make my own. I don't know what this billboard renderer does. Um, let's be in scripts, maybe utility. And we'll call this text face camera. Still haven't fixed that yet, LOL. Um, for now, I'm just going to use the main camera just for testing purposes. So update every frame. We're going to get the camera position. And then we want the 3D text to look the opposite direction. Oh no, the same direction as the camera. Could it be so simple? Call this play menu text. Text face camera. Yeah, there we go. Nice. And then if I spin this bad boy. Cool. I like the look of that. I can get rid of these goofy options and just use something in 3D space. Uh, what happens if I spin you this way? See, that's... Is that a problem? I don't think that is a problem. The greatest problem that we have is um, we'll only have six top-level options for our main menu, but I can't think of many games that have more than that for their top menu. Okay, let's get you back to no rotation. <clears throat> let's turn off these silly guys. Don't need those anymore. So here's our play menu text. Let's go back to menu here. I don't believe we've done anything with either of these yet. We have not. So I'm actually going to destroy them. Well, how about we'll just re we'll destroy this one. We'll probably create it again later in all honesty, and we'll just call this main menu cube face. Visual Studio. There we go. Main menu cube face. How are we doing on time? 30 minutes, 24. <laughs> so each of these cube faces is going to have four linked options, right? Um, so we rename these like face that's relative if you spin the cube downwards. Um, face above, face to right.
And we could store it all in here. I was thinking we could do a static variable. Um, but dang, got it. Just like I said earlier, we're still going to need that main menu input. Should have known better. I called it. And this will be a... Will it be a serialized field? Yeah. Yeah, that seems fair. Um, and this is going to be a main menu cube face um, selected face. Selected menu face. And we'll just test this out. We'll say if. Um, get key down, key code, space, selected menu face, dot, enter. Oh, come on. Yeah, this is where we have to decide how we're going to be transitioning scenes. No, we don't. It's a prototype. <clears throat> um, can I? I've never tried this before. Serialize field scene. And the scene to transition to, can I just link this up? I'll put this on the face itself. Hmm? There we go. Do, 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 do. Struct runtime data structure for dot unity file. Don't think that's quite what we want. Maybe game object transition to scene. Never tried to link a scene before. Special cube test. Nope. Object. Let's take it even further. There we go. And so if we enter this, I can do scene manager dot load scene. And I want to, we've just got ints and strings. So I'm going to say transition to scene dot name. OK. So we've got this main menu input. There we go. Selected menu face is our up face. Oh, Jesus. That's not our up face. Oh, boy. <laughs> that could have been um, embarrassing. <clears throat> well, it could have been more embarrassing, that's for sure. Um, I think I want the forward face, right? No, I want the back face. Sure. And then copy component, remove, back face, paste component as new. 
Cool. So now um, let's make sure that our main menu input is going towards, yes, this back face. Ooh, variable start node of cube manager has not been assigned, right? I'm trying to spawn a whittling here, not a great plan. Um, scene could not be loaded because it has not been added to the build settings. Ooh, ah, it's our cube manager that's doing this. Yeah, I don't know if I want to even have this. Like, what was its job? Why did I have that there? Oh, I still didn't fix the second error. Let's do that now. Um, build settings file. Scenes. Special cube test. Boom. Let's throw our main menu in there, too, because I know that we're going to need that. Nice. Uh-oh. Whoa, that's not great. <laughs> it would appear we've got our camera works. Our spinning does not work anywhere. Object of type cube core has been destroyed. Cube cores were destroyed. Let's save. Interesting. So it works fine if I just hit play in here. Oh my god, it doesn't. Did I blow up mouse controller? I did blow up mouse controller. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I blew it up and then I didn't even. Okay. <laughs> There's our scripts. Git clone. Mouse controller CS <clears throat> already exists and is not an empty directory. Okay, we don't want to clone. Can I do git pull mouse controller CS? Not a git repository. I know I'm using the wrong ones. Um, okay, Internet Explorer. This is not something I do very often. Git, uh, I want to. Overwrite local file with remote. I don't want to do the whole... If you want to overwrite only one file. Fetch, checkout, origin. Okay. And then the file path. No, I need to fetch. And we're in the K 
camera work branch. And I want mouse controller. Hey, there we go. Gotta love source control. Really, really gotta love it. The reason I couldn't control Z in here was because when I changed the name of the file, it reopened Visual Studio, and that means that all of the... I believe that means that all of the undo data that was stored was wiped. So let's try this again. Let's go from our main menu. Okay, explosions. Hmm. Oh my god. Your script should either check if it is null or you should not destroy the object. So cube cores, who uses this? Find objects of type in my start. This is a static. Oh, please tell me this is static. Okay, good, good. But it seems like my start, did that ever get called? Do, 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 do. Sure, those look like valid. <clears throat> Interesting. Finding all cube cores. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Okay, so the problem is my um, this is on the path node class, and I have path nodes on here. So the first thing it does is this path node, the first one that runs its start function, looks for all of the cube cores. It finds the one. And then when we enter the next level, that static variable is completely set. So that should not happen in the path. That should happen in the start of maybe cube manager. That seems like a good plan. I mean, I even had a to-do up here that said move this. Cube manager. We will make this public in start. Find objects of type. Cube spawners. Spawn. Set up cubes. Find neighbors. Cube filter not being used. And we'll only do this. Oh, dang, it can't be static. Because each level is going to have its own different type of cube, different amount of cube cores that exist in different places in memory. 
Dang it. That's fine. That's fine. Um, find objects of type Q core. And that means that every path node is going to need access to this cube manager. Hooray. Could make cube manager a singleton. No, I could not. I could. I'm not gonna though. Um, do consider singleton. I mean, what's the cost really? Like, oh, I have to find the cube manager for a hundred path nodes at the start of the level. I think that's okay. We'll find out if it's not okay later. Once it lags or breaks. And just call him Cube Manager. I really like how C Sharp can have a variable name be the same as the class name. Pretty cool. Validate, overlaps. My awake. And let's do a little bit of um, defensive programming in here. Find objects of type cube manager. So we're finding an array of all of the cube managers, right? And we'll say if managers.count, or sorry, length, not equal one debug log error. I don't need these ellipses. And we'll do an else here cube manager equals managers at zero. A little bit of a hack just to make sure that there's only one of these in each scene. And that means wherever it's angry, like here, and probably, oh wait, oh God, that's not necessary anymore. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, why is this in the path node overlaps other cube? Like, I guess our path node it does need to talk to the cube manager, right? But who calls this? Maybe whoever calls this will have better understanding. Oh, that's in path node. Mm. Mm. Okay, we'll stick with that for now. Sure. Let's make sure this all works. You manager, sure, we'll turn you on. Zero, not great. <laughs> hey, we got an error, what is that? There's more than one cube manager in the scene. Mm-hmm. Wait, really?
16, one for each path node. Sure. Did I do something dumb here? See how many there are. Oh, I'm dumb. This was turned off. So our path nodes need cube managers. Hey, I found one. Okay, boom. Unassigned reference exception start node. Sure. That's a little bit bizarre. Start node, I believe that lives in the manager. Core level objects, cube manager, start node. Oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> I believe because spacebar not only teleports me from the, you know, one scene to the other, I believe that this code was actually run on the same frame, which I find really bizarre. Let's change that. Um, main menu input, key code enter. Keypad enter, then we want return. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it was just angry about that. I'm happy. <sighs> so lots of really tiny fixes. Um, I guess I got about 12 minutes left. Um, I guess we should decide, did I already do that in to-do? Flash screen, main menu, level select, intro, outro, level stats, replay option. By replay, I mean they can play the level again. I don't know how interesting or worthwhile it would be to watch yourself play that level. Maybe showing your awesomeness to other people. That's a decision I'd have to make like really early. Is it though? Like, replays might not be hard to do. I just record the inputs, not even like the mouse positions, just the inputs that were decided upon by the user with the timestamp, right? Is that too crazy? I don't think that's too crazy. Hmm. So we'll have a quit and an options play, quit, options, achievements. Oh boy. I'll put quit on the down face, right? Um, so 
So Z should be 0 0.5. No. Yeah, how far out is my... Oh! Okay, I don't think I changed anything. That's pretty much one unit out. I like that a lot. One unit. One unit. <clears throat> Quit menu text. Um, let's do options to the right. And of course, this would be zero, one. Oh, achievements is going to be such a huge word. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need a, a, a way to figure out, like, how to make this look good. But for now, we'll put achievements on up. Oh, hey. What's next? Wait, we need something over here. <laughs> it's got to be something. Credits. Oh, my gosh, that is embarrassing. Credits. So, left face. Oops. So, let's see, we've got our cube. And the user spins it to the right. Oof, that looks great. Nothing. Credits. So hard to see the spin down. I really like that. With a little bit of like fading if it goes behind. And maybe shrink it down just a little bit. A little bit of highlighting here. Maybe some background uh, cool little name plates. Yeah, that looks pretty darn good. Um, let's zero this out. And let's try playing with the font sizes, right? Point one. And then maybe font size 24. That looks a little bit better. Achievements is still going to be like busting out of the back here. So we're going to need to fade that out if it's on the opposite side.
Okay, I like that. So that was 0.1 character size, 24 font size. Twenty-six. <laughs> Let's make sure to save this bad boy. So we haven't actually gotten the spinning to work. I think we'll save that for tomorrow. Yep, we're right on time. So yeah, we're going to save the spinning for tomorrow. As always, I'm going to start simple. We're just going to do it with letter keys at first. And after we do the letter keys, then we can... Um, get our swipe going. And we've already done the math for our swipe. It's just gonna be different because we don't care about the position of the camera. But maybe we can care about the position. No, no we don't because this is the top. Yeah, okay. Oh, dang it. You know what would be way cooler? If we spun the camera. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. I just want to see what that looks like at first. Um, our cube is at 0, 1, 1.58. So I'm going to create an empty game object in there and then pull it out. And we'll call this camera pivot. We'll drop the main camera in this bad boy here. And then instead of spinning the cube, oh yeah. Huh. Huh. That's not what I want. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Get some lighting on the camera. Credits. Nothing. Options. Yes. Yes, I like this. Okay, change of plans. We're going to spin the camera. Oh, but the whole point of the game is to spin the cubes. Hmm, that's a design decision. I'll have to think about that over the rest of the day. Uh, but thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit, and I'll see you next time.